On the bench today is a Southwest Technical Products Tiger Saurus Amplifier Model 210A. And the owner left two of these with me. This one has a problem. It oscillates. The other one I tested in another video works just fine. And these amps had a reputation of letting out the magic smoke. Some of them would work just fine and some of them would oscillate and have problems. And this is the problem child and it oscillates. And it's been worked on and I kind of wonder if it ever worked and I think maybe it did because under these ceramic power resistors, these large long ones there, I see discoloration on the board so it might have had quite a few hours of operation telling me that it probably worked then because when it oscillates it burns up other parts yeah maybe it did work just fine at one point the owner got it off of eBay and I guess it never worked and it's been worked on I think all the resistors have been changed except for the ceramic ones and uh, capacitors were changed I put these transistors in because I don't know the state of the other ones and I you know I don't know the state of these output transistors so I took all of them out and measured their gain at low current and high current and uh, let me show you here they're using these substitutes these ECG branded ones and I took them all out like I say and check the gain at low current and high current they have a lot more gain at high current which is not bad but they're not really linear so if you look at the gain versus collector current it makes an arc like this whereas a more linear transistor would start out high and stay flat and then slowly taper off at higher currents as far as the gain goes so yeah, these ones marked ECG all had lower gains at low currents and higher gains at high current. And some were really mismatched. You can see here the gains. And they were paired together in the output stage. So the owner left me with the MJ4502s and MJ802s. So I took all of those transistors and matched them up and put them in the output stage. So now I know the state of this output stage. It's all matched up. I know it's working. However, none of these transistors were bad. They're just kind of all over the place, so I replaced them. And there's two burned resistors here I replaced. They were paired up. There are a couple 200s in parallel to make a 100, and I just replaced it here because, you know, it's all burned up. Even though it measures correctly, though. Another weird thing I noticed, when the amp wasn't oscillating, it had some weird voltages. It was reverse biasing the base emitter junction of this square transistor here. I think those are TO5 just permanently mounted to its own heat sink. It's welded to it, so it's all one piece. I replaced the driver, and I uh, didn't notice that problem anymore. And I put some other transistors in and been trying different things. Now, the guys who worked on it before were saying it had an oscillation several hundred megahertz, like 300 and some megahertz. And I don't see how that's possible. I could see a few tens of megahertz, but 350, no, I, I don't see that. But what I'm measuring is an oscillation of around 230 kilohertz which would be in the bandwidth of the amplifier, the normal 
operating bandwidth. So that leads me to believe it's, you know, it's oscillating around the global loop instead of like a local loop. You know, if it was oscillating around, say, a, a transistor, you know, that could be a much higher frequency. But when it's the global loop, it's going to be a lower frequency, like this thing is oscillating. So that might be a clue there. And when I fiddle around with its stability components, like um, you know, C8 there in the middle of the screen, and C3, and I can change those, and it still oscillates. And it's still around the same frequency. Let's see here. C3... I'm sorry, C2 right there. I changed that one to a higher value just to see what would happen. And uh, it made it a little more stable, but if I make it too high, it affects the performance of the amp. And I even made it 1000 pico, 1 nano even, just to see what would happen. And Made, like I say, it made it more stable, but it still oscillates. One thing I noticed with this design is there's really no good bypassing on this board here. Now, that's one thing they seem to drive into your head in electronic school is make sure your rails are clean, your supply rails are bypassed. And when it's oscillating, there's a volt and a half peak-to-peak -peak signal on these rails. So I wanted to mitigate that, so I made this for the front end section of the amplifier. You know, there's a uh, regulated rails for the front end, and that signal is all over it. So I made this to bypass the rails. And for the output side of the rails, on this side of the board, I made these. And there's some film caps soldered underneath the board. And that really cleaned up the rails. But it didn't do anything for the oscillation. So I just, you know, I was just trying some things. And I thought that was going to nail it, but it didn't. Keeping in mind that the other amp, which is, this, you know, it's the same design as this, works fine. So... Minor change in parameters or something could be enough to throw this thing off and make it oscillate. Another thing I tried is removing all the stability components and trying Miller compensation because it's usually a better way to compensate an amplifier, but it had no effect. So there are clues in front of me here. The frequency of oscillation the fact that the frequency doesn't really change much regardless of when I adjust the compensation components or even how I compensate the amplifier. The fact that this design works fine in other amplifiers. So those are my clues. But you know, I still have to figure out how to attack it. How, you know, what, what should I do going forward here? Another clue is the DC operating points. Everything seems perfect, like everything's working. I'm getting half the supply voltage on the outputs between the collectors and the emitters of the stacks on the upper and lower. Constant current sources for the input stage, they're working, delivering the proper current. Everything seems balanced in the Double differential pairs, voltage amplification stage is biased, delivering current. The uh, bias control works, so the VBE multiplier, servo, whatever you want to call it, circuit is doing its business. And like I said, the output stage is biased up, drawing current. And, you know, like I said, it's... Uh, its operating points, DC at least, are 
just fine. So this thing is working. So yeah, that's another clue. Another clue for you all. The walrus was Paul. So yeah, let's uh, hook this thing up and see what's going on. Okay, I'm running it off of my supply so I can set a current limit. You know, I got all these new parts in. I don't want to blow anything up after doing all that work. So I'm set at plus and minus 20 volts, one amp. So I'll turn that on and it's not oscillating. Okay, everything's clear, but sometimes you can stimulate it by putting a signal in it or just touching a part there and it'll start oscillating. In fact, if I let it sit here, it might just start oscillating on its own. So let me come back here when it's oscillating. Okay, I had to help it a little bit. I touched the input and it burst into oscillation. Where is the dissipation though? Nothing gets hot on the board here. Well, it's dissipating it all into the output stage. It's shooting right through from positive to negative rail right through the output stage. I do have a load on it, but you know, if I remove the load, it's still drawing one amp because like I say, it's shooting right through the output stage. That's why I don't want to connect this to full voltage with no current limit. It, you know, you could blow up these new transistors or at least stress the heck out of them and uh, after changing a driver transistor this never burns up anymore this used to get warm this is the the resistor that was burned up I don't know if I showed it well, it's in here somewhere but yeah I don't have that problem anymore even on the limited supply that would warm up but it doesn't do it anymore during oscillation or just sitting normal. Like I say, the DC operating points are fine. I notice when I press on the board right here, it's like a bad connection. I mean, it still oscillates, it just changes the frequency. I noticed from the work that was previously done, some of the traces had lifted. And when I soldered, when I desoldered transistors and put new ones in, I noticed the traces do lift on this board. So, yeah, you got to be careful with that. I probably should warm up my soldering iron and uh, see if I can correct that. we going here. Oh boy, right there. See that lead is not soldered. That's my fault. I put that capacitor in. I soldered the other side. Nice work, John. Okay, I got it now. We're in good order. You can see here, this trace is gone. I jumpered it. I put all new input transistors in. I didn't clip the leads off, but I wanted to match them up. They were working before, but I just wanted to put new ones in and make sure they're matched up. That trace is gone, so I had to jump these two bases together on the input stage, as they are in the schematic. Uh, I had to jump this, jumper that. So yeah, the when you desolder, it lifts the trace right off the board in some cases, especially where they're thin. But anyhow, I got that 
capacitor solder on its one lead. Nice work, John. Nice work. It's not oscillating. Well, let me touch the input. Up oh, there it went. It's oscillating now, and my scope is not even connected. The lead came loose. Okay, it's back to its old shenanigans. It's oscillating again. I'm leaving these caps in. They bypass the rails. I still need electrolytics because of that frequency. There's some impedance in, with the value of these caps and the frequency of oscillation. But let me see if I can show you the crap that's on the rails here. Okay, this is the pos or I'm sorry, the negative rail. You can see there, what's that say? 840 peak to peak. Now, if I run higher current, it'll uh, be much higher, of course. Let's check the positive rail down here at the bottom. Get on there. About the same. It looks all doubled up like that because of the triggering. But yeah, it's a lot of junk on the rails. But like I said, you know, the other amp, it's not bypassed either and it's stable. I just noticed something interesting here. When I scope from base to emitter of these VI limiter transistors, you know, these don't really do anything in the circuit in normal operation. It's only to protect the output stage here, and you got this 0.1 ohm resistor. When enough current flows through that, it develops a voltage drop across it. So when it reaches 0.6 volts, that's enough to bias the base emitter junction on and start conducting collector current. What that does, it takes the uh, driver signal from the driver here and bypasses it to the rail. It shunts it away from here because these outputs are base to emitter and they go to the rail. So essentially limiting current and I'm seeing a, uh, a waveform across this that's over that 0.6 volt. I mean if it's going in the right direction it could be triggering this on. Maybe it's causing some sort of oscillation. I do not know. The only way to find out is to pull those transistors. I checked both sides and yeah, I'm getting enough voltage that could be triggering those. So I'm going to pull those and see what happens. Put my little close proximity ground probe on there and probe across the base emitter junction of the transistor that is now removed but it still oscillates of course and yeah that's a pretty significant signal there I want to make sure I wasn't getting any coupled pick up through this and it was throwing me off which can happen with scope leads sometimes so that signal is actually there but it's not what's causing the oscillation. Just to show you how noise can couple into that ground lead, watch this. So I just attached the lead, clipped it onto the probe tip there. See how it picks that up? Picking up that signal. So yeah, it's possible because, you know, the current in the circuit it could couple in there and throw off your measurements. I'm just looking at phase shifts around the circuit here. This is the output. You can see the, the purple and yellow are phase shifted. The yellow is the output. There's a slight phase shift because of that coil. There's an output coil. They wrapped it around the capacitor there. If I probe around the circuit, I can see, you know, the different phase shifts. Let's turn that one up a little bit. 
Let's see if there's any thing interesting there. And you turn it up more. It's fun to do this holding a camera. Yeah, there's a about a 90 degree phase shift. This is on the base. Let's see, that's the base of the main driver transistor. So there's a significant phase shift. Of course, you, we're running at uh, 184 kilohertz right now, the oscillation is. Or since I fixed that solder on the capacitor there. Well, I think I'm going to stop right here because the video is getting long. I have to continue this in a later video. But I can say with absolute authority that I do not have a single clue as to why this amplifier is oscillating. I mean, obviously, it's a feedback phase shift thing, but where's the problem occurring at and uh, what can I do about it? That's what I don't know yet. It's just going to take more experimentation and testing. Well, this thing is an absolute bear, an absolute tiger saurus to work on. And uh, I guess we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.